All right, today we're talking about another lightweight cross-country racer, the uh, Trek Super Caliber 9.7. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Texas, to Houston, where we are talking mountain bikes again today. And today we are talking about another high-end cross-country race bike. Yeah, maybe you're tired of being left behind, so you need to shed some weight in your bike so that you can keep up with these faster guys that keep beating you. All right, when you get into these high-end cross-country race bikes, I think they're cool. Maybe I'm kind of a weight weenie uh, in some ways. I, I'm just interested in these lightweight bikes. But also, um, it's just interesting to see the technology and see what they're using in the professional, you know, the World Cup cross-country racing. So they are high-end, so you may have to, you know, sell a car. Uh, you may have to kick your, uh, your mooching kid out of the basement and tell him to get a, his own place. Uh, or you may have to get creative with some financial decisions. But if that's where you're at, then uh, the Trek Super Caliber is probably on your list of options. So unlike a, a while back on another video, we talked about the Trek Top Fuel. That one's a bigger travel bike. So below that bike is the shorter travel bike, which is a 110 millimeters in the front, 80 millimeters. So this is lighter, stiffer, and just more of a focused cross-country race bike. So this one is the Gen 2 version. So back in 2019, they came out with the Gen 1, and now they have redesigned it for 2024. And with the changes for 2024, they did some redesigning in the frame and also in the suspension where you get more travel now. The head angle is slacker. We'll talk about that. Uh, a little bit more travel in the rear. Did some changes with the uh, rear triangle and you have some different carbon options for the front triangle, which gives you a just updated new generation of Trek race bike. So as far as different models, uh, the least expensive option is just the frame. <laughs> you can get the frame for four grand, build up your own super caliber, or you can get the, uh, the 9.6 version. So the lower the nine, the lower the trim. Um, these are all carbon. You don't have an aluminum option, uh, so keep that in mind. So in the U.S., uh, the least expensive complete bike you can get is the uh, the 9.6, which is uh, $4,199 as of October. And you can then get this one, which is the 9.7. And this one runs $5,699. And it goes all the way up to $14,500 for the top of the line 9.9 .9 with a flight attendant, which is a fancy electronic locking system. So quite a bit of range there. So if you are someone who likes a lot of color options, uh, Super Caliber isn't necessarily the one to give you all those options. Um, you have to kind of go over the $10,000 mark where then they start to give you some different color options. Uh, the 9.7, for example, this is your only option. 9.6 only has one. The 9.8 uh, Shimano gives you two different colors, GX just one, and then you get a few different color options on some of the other higher builds. As far as sizing goes on the Super Caliber, uh, 29 inches across, you have a small, you have a medium, you have a medium large, large XL. Reach numbers tend to be a little bit on the smaller side, which is kind of common for you know cross country race bikes. But so yeah, looking at the reach numbers, I would probably fit more in the medium large, being at five foot eight. Uh, this one is a size small. Um, this one's actually uh, uh, Ricardo's uh, dad's bike, Fernando's. So thanks, Fernando, for letting me uh, look at the bike. And uh, I may ride it. He said I could ride it, but it is a small. So I don't know. It would be fun. I just don't know if that would be the best impression of the bike in a size that's probably two sizes too small for what I would do. All right, so let's go over the frame and then the specs on this Trek Super Caliber. All right, starting with the frame. So a lot to talk about here. As I mentioned, carbon only is your options, but you do get a choice of two different types of carbon. All right, so as far as the material of the frame, this uses an OCLV carbon. OCLV is optimum compaction, low void, something or other. So basically the way that they manufacture the carbon. Yeah, OCLV is simpler, so, and it sounds fancy. So yeah, so this is the SL frame, which uh, OCLV, mountain carbon fiber. All right, so with the carbon, with the SL, uh, you actually get a different front triangle, which um, probably uses a little bit more carbon uh, than the SLR. Uh, just the way they lay it up is my guess. Maybe they have a weight limit. I will have to 
confirm that. Uh, one thing they did say is that in the SL frame, you do have some guides for the, the cables to run through here, but on the SLR, they do not. They both use the same rear triangle, rear carbon triangle. So just the front triangle is different. So if you're a weight weenie and you want to shed the most weight, the SLR frame is the one to get. But if that doesn't matter to you, then might as well just get the SL frame. All right, as far as the, uh, the overall fit and finish of the bike, it's a nice uh, paint job. I mean, if I'm honest, it's a little bit on the eh, kind of a little bit boring conservative side. No offense, uh, Fernando. Um, it's just not the uh, color that I would necessarily go for, but hey, colors are unique to everyone. So, and I know it wasn't necessarily his choice, but this is just basically what uh, Trek decided to go to. A uh, small logo here, but I do like, they're definitely proud on the logo there, which is good. You definitely know it's a Trek if you see it fly by on the trail. And Super Caliber is definitely uh, very large. So yeah, hole's a little bit big for some reason here. I don't know why for the, uh, this is for the, uh, the lockout, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But other than that, uh, no frame storage on this one. You do get uh, two water bottle mounts, which is nice. This one uh, looks like you have huh, different, you can go actually up higher, it looks like, to have room, even on the small, uh, which I'm surprised they actually give you a water ball mount on the seat tube as well is made possible by this design which we'll talk about uh, the uh, semi-hidden shock in a little bit so this one's running uh, wireless but you do have plugs if you want to uh, be able to run a wired uh, drivetrain goes inside there and then normally would come out up under here Nice beefy uh, chain protector here. Brake hose goes in there and brake line comes through there. So yeah, looking at this seat stay as it comes all the way up here and then goes into this uh, ISO strut, which uh, we might as well start to talk about now. And I don't know who came out with this first, whether it was Trek or Specialized, who has a very similar design on their uh, cross-country race bike uh, Epic. But as you can see, this seat stay basically integrates up into here uh, into the, uh, the top tube of the bike, which gives it a real sleek uh, look there and makes it possible you know, for a uh, water bottle there. So yeah, like it, hate it, um, I think it's just, it's different. I don't think it looks bad. Uh, it looks a little bit different when you first see it where you see that line come down and then you're like, wait, what's up under here? Yeah, and there's the mount there. So we'll talk about this ISO strut in just a little bit. One thing that's kind of interesting is how the, uh, the chain stay, there's no bridge here. The bridge is actually on the other side of the seat tube, which is kind of interesting. So hopefully, I guess that would mean, I mean, you have lots of room there for, uh, for your muddy rides uh, to be able to get out of the way and not get stuck in there. So yeah, kind of interesting. No frame protection on this down tube, uh, just a, a clear frame protector. Tapered head tube, of course. And you have your brake hose coming out here, then a plug right there on your lower one if you're in a different part of the world. All right, let's talk about suspension on the Super Caliber. So on this 9.7 trim, up front you get the RockShock Reba, which this is 110 millimeters. I haven't said that on the channel in a while. So yeah, pretty low amount of travel. Um, Trek does say you can go up to a 120. So if you feel like you need some more, the frame will support 120. Uh, but this one has the uh, motion control damper. Just notice this usually on the left side. Uh, so I don't know why they put it on the right side, but anyway, your sag is on the right side on here. These are 32 mil stanchions. So not beefy, not like the SID, uh, like the 35. I think the SID has a 32 or 35 now. So as you can see, it has a uh, lockout cable that goes over here and it mounts to this, looks like a old school grip shift. This is to lock out your fork. So you can lock out your fork quickly. And when you do that also, your shock will lock out. So it does both at the same time to give you a nice stiff feel if you're climbing up uh, you know a real steep climb yep and yeah it's it definitely uh, stiffens it up pretty good so uh, yeah a little bit simpler system it looks like than maybe the Scott uh, system which has you know another couple options but this one's just lock out or leave it open so for your shock it gets obviously a little complicated here with this iso strut so what is this iso strut well basically it's your shock 
but it's not like your normal shock which mounts with, the, with its own housing. You basically have your, your stanchion, which is a 38 millimeter uh, rock shocks stanchion. So basically like half of a Zeb uh, goes in here. And it's interesting because yeah, you have your seals and dust wipers just like on a uh, you know, normal uh, fork. So you have one there and then you have one back here and this whole thing can come out if you need to service it. So you remove there, there's a bolt under there. Your whole basically shaft or stanchion will come out of here where you can service it, which is interesting, you know, the way that it mounts here, there's your lockout. And on this side, you have your air and then you have your rebound control right there. So pros, cons with this design. Pro is it makes it stiffer because your shock is basically built in to uh, your frame in many ways. So you don't have a lot of linkages, um, you know, pivots. It's a lot less complicated, I guess, as far as that regards with, uh, you know, bearings and pivots. The con is, well, you're kind of stuck with this shock. So it's not something that is readily, you know, able to change out to other brands. If Fox has an option, if you want to do Fox instead of Rock Shocks, I don't know. Yeah, so the con of doing a, uh, you know, proprietary ISO strut design. So you only have 80 millimeters of travel. Um, that is up from the last generation of Super Caliber. So it gives you a little bit more. Uh, so, hey, it's something that a hardtail can offer, but uh, not as much as maybe some of the other cross country options. All right, let's talk drivetrain on the Super Caliber 9.7. Uh, they decided to go with the SRAM GX uh, Eagle. Uh, this is the uh, transmission, the T-Type. So GX crank set up front, this is 170 on the small and medium and I think it goes to 175 on the larger ones. Uh, 34 tooth chain ring. The frame does allow, this chainstay does actually allow for a 38 tooth if you wanted to. So for those that want to go real fast, uh, you could go uh, pretty large for this type of bike. Uh, you do have a press fit bottom bracket. So uh, yeah, 92 shell uh, press fit uh, there. So yeah, uh, would have liked to have seen a, a threaded one, but that's what they went with. Your uh, GX uh, T-Type chain and your GX transmission uh, 1052 tooth cassette. So lots of range, very shiny. Uh, we'll see if it stays shiny. And your GX transmission uh, derailleur. So no cables, wireless of course, those familiar with the uh, GX and transmission. And you have your pod controller, which uh, some people like, some don't. You could always go to the older uh, axis shifter and pair it if you like that, uh, those buttons better. And because this is transmission, uh, yep, UDH. So basically your hanger is your derailleur. So it's built into the frame, making it nice and stiff. And you don't have any adjustments, which is cool. The advantage of transmission. All right, for your saddle and dropper post. Uh, so yeah, Fernando actually changed out his saddle to a, a Volt saddle. It comes with a Bontrager uh, seat. Bontrager dropper post, only 100 millimeters of travel on the size small. When you get into the uh, medium and large and bigger ones, you can go up to 150. And also in the biggest ones, uh, looks like they go up to 170 in travel. And I believe you're limited because you do have the water bottle uh, boss right here. So I think you're limited on insertion there. Um, so that's why maybe a hundred. I would think you'd be able to go a little bit more than a hundred. Seems like it's a little uh, on the shorter side for a, even a size small, but. And for your dropper lever, it looks like a uh, generic, maybe it's a Bontrager uh, dropper lever. And you do have matchmaker. So if you like clamps, uh, well here it's consolidated into one with the, uh, the SRAM level uh, brake clamp there. So talking about cockpit, uh, he did change out these grips. These are not the uh, standard ones. They come with uh, Bontrager grips. For your cockpit, as we're talking about that, this is the uh, Bontrager uh, Covey Pro uh, carbon bars, uh, 720. So 720 is pretty small, but for a small frame, it's probably fine. As you go up in sizes, they go up to a 750, which still seems a little bit small. You'd think they'd go bigger and cut it down, but. Uh, he changed out the stem, uh, basically the things in blue is what he changed out. So he went with the I-9 stem instead of the normal Bontrager, which is a 35 mil clamp and 60 millimeter length on the standard uh, 9.7. Matchmaker as well on the right side uh, with the uh, shifter pod and the level brake. And talking about brakes, uh, they did go with SRAM uh, level bronze. 
So you do get the uh, lever adjustment here, and these are stealth, so stealth meaning they go this away instead of that away. For those that do, uh, you know, internal cable routing. Uh, speaking of internal cable routing, I will give Trek props. For one, there's no knock block, which I can't stand knock block. So I'm glad they don't have it here. They just have a normal one. And I'm glad, actually, that they didn't do any, uh, you know, cable routing through the uh, the headset, which is getting more popular these days on some brands. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit messy with all these hoses and cables here, but uh, you can tighten them up and make them a little cleaner. I'm actually surprised Fernando hasn't kind of tidied this up. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Fernando. We'll help you with that. But other than that, I like the cockpit. I mean, those handlebars are pretty low rise, but with cross country, usually you don't get much rise. So um, I assume that's because they're more efficient and better to climb with low rise. All right, with your brakes, you do have these level two piston. Looks like they do need an adapter even only with 180, but I guess the, uh, the Reba is a 160. So these are 180 millimeter uh, center lock rotors. And in the back, uh, it says 160 millimeters. So my guess is that's as big as you can go in the back here. So level single piston center lock rotors on this uh, basically floating uh, brake mount, which they have. So let's talk wheels and tires. So first on these wheels, these wheels are not the stock wheels. They come with just an aluminum uh, set. So these wheels are the high-end uh, Bontrager Covey uh, RSL so um, I don't know a ton about these wheels other than they are very lightweight like 1200 grams crazy lightweight he has some uh, industry nine um, the uh, lighter hydras I think so like more of the gravel uh, engagement which but it's still noisy still high engagement just not quite the same but it still feels like a normal hydra so 148 uh, boost spacing, of course, in the back. And then up front, 110 boost spacing as well, I-9. Um, I think Fernando did a good job with the blue and the, uh, the blue nipples here, I think looks cool. Um, so good job, Fernando, on that. But yeah, very, those are expensive wheels, and uh, but they are light, so brings this bike down to just over 25 pounds in the current build. So for tires, uh, they use the Bontrager St. Anne. These are a 29 by 2.4 tubeless tire. Uh, looks like built for speed. So not as much traction, more for speed, but uh, I've never tried them, but they, they look like they are probably fast. And they went with the uh, same tire up front, 2.4. So yeah, that's gonna sum up uh, kind of the specs and features of this Trek Super Caliber 9.7. Uh, this build comes in at just over 25 pounds with those wheels. I think the stock one's going to be like a pound more. And you can get these as light as, uh, I think it was 22 pounds in the top of the line build. So the weight weenies that need the lightest bike possible and all the goodies and fancy bits, you can get a uh, get it down pretty light, which uh, honestly would be fun to ride and just to see. All right, guys. Well, let me know what you guys think of this Trek Super Caliber. Uh, if you are that XC racer that's looking for an edge and wants the lightest weight, stiffest bike possible, you might have this on your list. Uh, I probably would if I was in that market. Uh, and I am intrigued to ride this just to kind of see how it feels compared to my, uh, you know, my transition spur, which it's in a different kind of class. But Still, it's kind of, it's a lighter weight uh, cross country trail bike. So yeah, let me know what you think of that suspension design. Uh, I mean, they are doing pretty well in the World Cup. Evie Richards, I think, is in the top this year. She rides a Trek in the previous years, uh, Yolanda Neff and others. So Trek definitely is up there as far as World Cup. Now, is it all just, uh, you know, the bike? Probably not. Uh, I think the, some incredible athletes, but uh, definitely a force to be reckoned with in the professional World Cup stage. So if you think, uh, you know, that bike can get you there, you might want to check it out. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions on the Super Caliber, let me know, and I would be glad to answer them. And I hope you guys are doing well. We'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.